So let's bring it up to date then. What yeah. made you join Pickers? You said you mentioned a couple of people you knew there, yes. but that, that, that won't that doesn't mean everything. No. You've still got to be interested in the role and yeah. the opportunity. So what made you join? Uh, size of business, so about 180 people. I think the maturity of where they are. Um, so it's not all figured out. You know, we are, right now, we're revising the partner programs. We're putting the training in place. We're putting some structure in around the cha- channel, go to market, who we're recruiting. I don't like going into a job where it's all figured out and you're just to take take over or the caretaker do you know what I mean I actually want to go in and have impact so that's what I look for I look for the challenge what can I bring from my history into this business and be effective that's what I look for now there's one thing getting the job yes and there's one thing doing the job so tell the listeners about how you would establish a channel and how you you go about it because there'll be listeners out there thinking well maybe I'm slightly aware of pickers but maybe not sure about who who they are in the market yeah so Tell me, you've got the job. <laughs> How do you establish a channel? So uh, the journey is obviously got to have the right tools in place. So, you know, some semblance of a partner program, some semblance of training. Um, for me, when I start these journeys, I'm not looking to go out and recruit hundreds and hundreds of partners. Yeah. I want to give the partners that we choose an opportunity to be successful quickly. Because I think one of the hardest things with recruitment of partners is showing return on investment for their time as quickly as you can. You know, you're asking them to get in front of their sales guys to training. You're asking for SE time, who should be out doing other things. You're asking them to spend some marketing dollars with you. So if we can have a small set of focused partners that you can bring opportunities to, that can actually show you some of their customers in return and we can move fast that means that we can then do organic growth so sometimes it you know a lot of businesses will go i want to go and work with all the big system integrators the atos the kpmgs great but it takes such a long time and actually what the business is going to want is a demonstration of results so that's much easier with the smaller focus partners where you as a vendor are quite important to them as well. Your success is linked like a marriage together. So how, how do you sort of target who you're going to work with? Is it is, are they got, are they going to be a security focused partner? Is it, you know, I, I mentioned to you, you know, it's not computer centre rolling out the red carpet and no. saying, oh, great, here, yeah. here's Sarah. Come <laughs> in, Sarah, we've been waiting for you. It's not going to happen, is it? No, I mean, I, I'm kind of looking for a, a small to medium sized security vendor. Um, right now, what's important for us is actually looking at their current vendor list. So like a lot of vendors, we've got an ecosystem technology alliance piece that actually makes sense if we can find the right ones to marry towards that could be checkpoint trend could be splunk crowd strike so that's part of the criteria that we're looking at they obviously need customers um i need to see a good balance in their business of not just reselling product but also doing the services and maybe some managed services as well so that profile really is kind of the, the guts of what we're looking for my mantra is always the same, you know, we'll, we'll have a list of partners, but fail fast. If it's not working and they're not responding and then just, just not ready to engage, they might have a closed list on the vendor side, not going to talk to us for six months, fine, let's move on. Because we haven't got time to wait and see for six months if it's going to work out. So fail fast. So how do you know if it's going to work out? So say, for instance, they've got customers, they've got those sort of vendor portfolio that you think is complementary to what you're doing. How do you get it going? Is it training? Is it on site? It's a is mixture. It, it's it? a mixture. I think the hardest thing sometimes is getting through the door. I think yeah. that's some of the challenges that we've been finding because if the timing's not right for the conversation. So if you can't get through the door and you keep trying and you're trying different people inside the business, you're not getting anywhere, that's definitely a move on. Um, really where we've been having success is actually just trying to uh, latch onto some of that ecosystem piece. You know, how can we build a story here? So one of the things that we're really focusing on is vendor specific mitigation. These customers have spent a lot of money on this tech and they're probably getting 50, 60 percent ROI back on it. Mr. Partner, if we could get you up to 80, 85, one thing you're going to do is help secure your renewal. Um, mm. You will look good as the trusted advisor in front of your customer that actually that you help them make a good decision on their investment. And that's what we can do. We can shine a light on the current cybersecurity infrastructure and make sure it's working really, really well for our customer. 
So that's our angle at the moment, and that is resonating really well. And how would you say what what believes so what sets you out from your competition when you go in to do a, a pitch at a small partner why why do they say actually yeah we'll, we'll give this a go i think a lot of us rely on our network of relationships we're going to knock on the easy doors mm. uh, without naming names we um, definitely internally have a very strong belief around being the trusted vendor some of our competitors maybe have started with a channel ethos and now starting to pull back and doing a bit of a mixed model i hate that if you're going to be channel, you are all in. You don't do a channel half, only. Yeah, you don't do a half bait go to market. It doesn't work. So that's one. Of Why the, doesn't it work? Why, because the trust opinion? goes. The trust goes. The trust goes completely with the partner. They want to know where they stand. If they're going to invest in you, doing events, lead generating activities, giving you exposure to their accounts, and doing all that account mapping exercise, the last thing they want to expect is you coming in saying, "Yeah, we got a deal, but actually, actually, we're going to take that one direct this time." doesn't work you cannot do that and that has been one of the best things that stood as well against our competitors of late one of the questions i always get asked is how does a senior director who's trying to establish a channel mm. manage expectations from the top now yeah. i'm not saying your current bosses or anything like that it, we, we, we'll, keep General. Na- we'll, we'll keep names out of it yeah but i know from experience of, and hearing it mm. they want results now they want to establish the channel now, yeah. they want deals now, etc. And it doesn't quite work like that. No. So how do you manage top down? One of the things I've always done is make sure they're involved. So as channel managers, you should not be the only person with the relationship at the partner. You need executive right. sponsorship. So I'm a great believer in bringing in the CEO, hence why I like working with smaller companies, because they care enough. They should have the relationship with their senior management in the reseller as well. Understand their business. You know, that's the big mistake a lot of us always forget in Vendorland. A reseller, system integrator, they are a business in their own right. We have to find our way of adding our service into their business. And I think bring the CEO into that discussion, which is manageable when you're running a small set of partners per market, So they actually understand the business as well. They have a relationship. But you do have to manage expectation. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have some problems, but I over-communicate. Let them know what's going on. Don't leave things so long that they're actually at the end of a quarter going, well, where's my business, Sarah? Where where does it go wrong? Because I normally hear when people get jobs... Uh, again, not not saying that your current job, it could have been any any job, but they'll go in and they'll say, well, the market and spend wasn't this and the list of pet partners wasn't that and the CEO wasn't really interested in, in getting involved with the partners. Yeah. So when you go into a, a new job or mm. in your experience, how long do you think it, it takes to sort of establish a channel and establish those timeframes and, and what's the critical things that you need? Is it market and spend? Is it a list of partners that are already spending? What are you looking for? What am I looking for? Um... Well, let's talk about where I'm at now. One thing I've been pleasantly surprised about is we use an open source learning management system called Purple Academy. One of the hardest things I've had in most of my jobs is to get the enablement right. So you've probably spoken to a lot of people, my peers in this industry. You can do all the recruitment, you can have all the marketing dollars, but actually what's missing and always gets forgotten about is that how are we going to train these people? Mm. And the poor old SE gets wheeled out and he becomes the training partner, which is not what they want to do. So I do look for some of those fundamental investments. Are we going to have content that we can use internally, we can use for our customers and we can use for partners? And Pickers has been brilliant in that respect that we've got so much content and we're now in a position that we can get the training probably live this next couple of weeks. So that, excuse me, that's really important. Um, the people, it's always about the people. You know, you, you're in recruitment. I start in recruitment. You just get a connection with people. Can I work with these people? Are we going to become a team? Um, and what I've found over the years is often the SC, they're my wingman out there because you need them to be out there with you championing building their tech to tech relationship inside the partner community um so it's the people the enablement marketing dollars help there's never enough we all know that but you've got to be realistic about what you've got to do with it you've got to beg borrow and still be creative um and have a good product do you 
we talked about the channel. It's about relationships and using yeah. your own network. If you can't get into a partner or you can't use your network of relationships, how do you, how do you get in the door? So if I said to you, right, I need you to get into Insight and you didn't know anyone there or that was a partner you wouldn't want to get into, how would you as the, the senior <laughs> director think, right, I've got to get in there? How, how would you approach it? Well, I'd start looking on LinkedIn for starters always to see who's who. Um, I think we all do this, don't we? Try and make our own connections, conversations. Um, there's always a connection though. As much as you say that you can't use your network, there's always a connection and I do use it extensively. Mm. You know, people that I've worked with before or people I've met at an event, could you help me just get in that? Um, I was at the channel meetup a few weeks ago. I don't know if you've ever been to that. It's a great um, event. It's kind of centered around marketing a little bit, but brilliant one um, at Runnymede Hotel. And it was, just a lot of discussion around the programs and the evolution of what's happening in the channel. And I really value those events because they're good networking events. And there's someone there that um, I want to use for a speaking engagement um, for a financial specialist webinar we're gonna do. But, you know, use your network, I've got to. That's what it's all about. So as much as I might not know anyone in that company, I will always find someone. You'll always. Always. You'll always find yes. someone. 